I'm here with Patrick Dixon, who's Chairman of Global Change, and he's been very provocative this morning and attacked the fund management industry. Patrick, what gives you the right to come here and abuse the audience? <laughs> well, I, I, I think it's not bad to say uh, attack. Uh, but all I did was I asked some questions, then reflected back some answers. Um, for example, um, I repeated to them one of your own tweets from yesterday. <laughs> uh, you tweeted a very interesting result, uh, an observation which shocked you, uh, which was that if we look at people who sell funds of funds, which is just a cluster, a clustering mechanism for the market, 50% um, of the audience was selling them, but only 5% actually owned them in their own personal lives. And I was extending that line of inquiry just to uh, ask some further questions about what confidence people had in their products. Now, one of the interesting points in the debate, because I'm passionate about fund management. Fund management is as important as the health service or education. Why? Because the wealth that's being managed is largely pension wealth. It's the stuff that really matters to you and me when we retire, to our parents um, and, 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 and our children too. So fund management is absolutely vital. But when I asked the question today, you know, is it, are you sure that your own fund can outperform a tracker. Of course, on average, we know that half the funds in the room last year underperformed the tracker because, on average, the tracker is an average, which means that half the funds will perform less well than, an, than a tracker, half the funds will perform better than a tracker. But what's really interesting about that is that the observations from the audience, and again, I straw polled them and I asked them these questions, when you add on all their charges, a fund that might have just performed maybe 3 or 4% better than a tracker, which is quite respectable, suddenly performs less well than a tracker. So it could well be, as the audience seemed to suggest to me, that when you load on all the management charges and all the other bits and pieces that have a cost in the system to the investor, that up to 70% of funds represented in the room here today might be on average, underperforming a tracker. That depends on how expensive those charges are. That's a lot. Because even if it's only 55% or 60%, it then becomes true. When I talk to my mother, and she's asking me for advice, she says, your dad has died, I've got a lot of stocks and shares, what should I do with them? I, I'm thinking of putting them into some kind of a fund. And I say, don't, but promise me you won't. And she says, why is that? I said, well, I don't know, I'm not an expert in this industry, all I know is this, over the last decade, I have lectured to over one and a half thousand fan managers and they all say the same as has happened today, which is that on average, many of the funds, perhaps even the majority of funds represented in the industry will underperform a simple tracker. That's number one. And I have to say, number two, therefore it's no great surprise that you find there's all kinds of fund products which are owned by very few fund managers unless they're forced to do so as part of their contract or to give customer confidence. Now, <laughs> that's quite serious. Um, I started off the uh, discussion today, I said, you know, with, with a bit of a lighthearted comment, I said, life's too short to do things you don't believe in, right? And everyone put their hands up. I said, yes, we agree with that. I said, life's too short to sell things we don't believe in, right? Everyone puts their hands up. But then we get to a point <laughs> where, it appears that over half the funds present in the room may be products that actually quite a significant number of people in that room don't believe in, and yet they're being sold. Now that is the agenda that is driving New Fund Forum International 210. It's fundamental, it's the reason why speaker after speaker after speaker all morning has been forced to address the question about cost, about commission, about transparency, just how much does it cost to have one of these products? You see, the fact of the matter is, I talk with pension funds a lot of the time, and some of them are here. And one of the guys I spoke to last night, he said, I can't price the products. That's too complicated. I cannot compare performance from one fund and another. So how can I make an intelligent and rational decision? When it comes to trackers, it's very easy. A tracker is a tracker. It's a defined computer-based product. And so you simply look at what the additional costs are. And you can say it's 0.5% or it's 1% or 0.2%. It doesn't matter. It's a very competitive environment. And trackers have seen their charges fall. But when you're talking about actively managed funds, where it's very difficult to, to separate out the foreign exchange benefits that you might get because the trust handles them all, the, um, uh, the, dom the, the uh, internationally domiciled funds and the, with their associated legal costs and all the other services which are packaged into that particular fund. 
It's very difficult, and it's lacking in transparency. It is the opposite of, uh, of, of, uh, of what pensions want, of what the individual consumers want. So this industry has to change. There's no doubt about that, and there's a, a huge consensus here about it. The only debate is how. Yes, and can it change? Well, that's a very good question, uh, which uh, I discussed with Jamie Broderick uh, um, from JP Morgan this morning, uh, with whom we, uh, I was sharing the session. I think that our collective view would be that uh, it is hard for an individual fund to make radical structural changes, for instance, to the way it pays its talent, because if it, if it acts alone, then the most talented people just disappear to a, another fund that pays more money. Um, and the fund then finds its, its, uh, its own uh, uh, talent pool is massively depleted. So it requires a consensus amongst the industry. Now that could come from um, self-regulation in some way, but it could also come from a, a conversation which government creates. And it may well be that government initiatives of various kinds, working in partnership with fund management industry, working in partnership with big pension funds, could bring, help to bring around, about, uh, bring about some of the mo more fundamental transformations that we need. I have to say I'm doubtful about whether conversations at New Fund Forum International 210 on their own can fix it. I think it, it does involve a wider uh, consultation and partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Patrick you. Dixon from Global Change.